Well, howdy, y'all. Welcome back to The Social Regressive and another blistering Oklahoma summer day. We're only one day into summer. This is June 22nd, and this mat is burning my elbows, especially this kind of vinyl stuff here. Uh, but what we're doing is we're testing 6mm arc, and we're going to see how precise this rifle is that we built. Now, we had some gas problems with this. This is a rifle-length gas system. I'm not getting quite enough oomph back into this heavier buffer. Uh, in order to cycle the bolt. So we're gonna be running without any gas. I'm just gonna hand cycle uh, all the ammunition here today, but we should be right on. Make sure that to check out the whole series if you wanna see all the things that we've gone through to build this rifle and uh, get it squared away. The scope is going to be just excellent today. This is a two to 12 Athlon Helos, and we are going to be doing some accuracy testing with the 108 grain match load from Hornady and Hornady Black. Now I thought I had more of this, I only have three shots of this stuff, so uh, we will just shoot one group. But I'm gonna do both with a can and without. So we're gonna start without a can. Um, I think I'll shoot the, uh, the Hornady Black with a can. We'll see how uh, this stuff performs. But I'm gonna do uh, some five shot groups with the Hornady Match. Oh, shot one is almost exactly where I was holding the reticle. Beautiful. And one thing I'll point out so far is that the, uh, the ammo has been showing no high pressure signs. The primers are flattened just a tiny little bit. Maybe there's just a teeny bit of swipe on eject. Uh, not on this one, of course, because it was ejected at the right time. But uh, yeah, once I get it all timed up, I think this is going to be just fine. You guys can see better than I can. But I think we're shooting a clover leaf out there. I think this is shooting really tight. We'll check it out in a sec, but first, let's go with the can. That dropped one and a half inches, so we have a new point of impact with the ammo. It's good to know. That one was a little bit of a hard lockup. Yeah, this brass is a little bit dirtier. Pretty obvious that we had some higher pressures coming back through the bore. So I'm gonna keep this separate from the rest. We'll see how these others do. Okay, pretty consistent point of impact. Yeah, sticky, a little bit dirty. Okay, looks like we're maintaining about a half inch. Okay, that one opened a little bit easier. Oh yeah. I'm gonna have to jackhammer this one open. All right, I got it open and I got the brass out. Uh, it's just not liking the can right now, just too much pressure coming back. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the can off so we can shoot that last uh, group. And we're not gonna do the fifth shot. We're just gonna do four on that one group because things are just getting so sticky. So yeah, we'll stay open and we'll shoot the, the three shots of Hornady Black and see how they do. Holy cow, this black box is making these things really hot. I'm just gonna put it straight through the middle. Very good. Vertically great. About a half inch off to the right. Oh yeah, that opened up nice and easy. No problems there. Okay, that one opened up a bit. That looks like maybe one MOA still. Not bad for a little carbine. Uh, the 108 definitely has it. We're gonna go check out those groups up close, but they are looking better. Um, now some of that is windage, so the vertical is actually looking pretty darn good. There could have just been a shift in the wind that I didn't account for. All right, let's go check it out. Here's group number one, fellas. 108 grain 
Hornady ELDM. Uh, these were, I think, the first three shots. And then we got into these. So this might have come out better if I had had the gas system running. I could just kind of keep my face and keep my hands all in the same place. I wouldn't have been moving around so much, and uh, maybe that would fix some of the dispersion. We'll see, but that's still excellent accuracy for this rifle. We're looking at about three quarter MOA, uh, you know, again, from a little carbine. So that is not too shabby at all. This is group number two with the suppressor. I only took those four shots. We're looking at about the same. This looks like about three quarters uh, MOA. So and this actually might be a little bit less than three quarter. Uh, so yeah, not too shabby right there. It looks like the dis the dispersion is just the same as it was up here. Um, it's just, yeah, different point of impact. So where I was aiming on this one, that spot, I was aiming right here, and then coming in low with the suppressor on top. All right, so here's open with the 105 grain BTHP match. And this one is a bit over an inch. So this is a little bit more than one MOA. It could be that uh, this was the one that actually shot a little bit better in the other rifle, so it might just be optimized a little bit differently. All right, now we're gonna step back to 600 yards and see what we can do to this guy. Before we take this to 600 yards, let's deal with these progressively distant steel animals. So I've got chickens at 200 meters. Got a little bit of wind from the right. Boom, all right, that looks solid. And remember, we don't have a gas system. For that last shot, I just used the reticle. The reticle in here is really nice. It's a great little Christmas tree. It's kind of bare bones, doesn't have a whole lot of stuff in it, but it has enough for me and for the practical distances that we'll be dealing with. But for this next shot, let's go ahead and dial it. So I'm gonna click up to open up that turret. And we need to go to 1.4. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that back down. So 1.4 mils, and by the way, each of these uh, full turns is 10 mils. This is a brilliant setup of a scope. All right, we're gonna take down this piggy, the black piggy on the far left. Let's see how the wind is. The glass in here is beautiful, so I can see plenty. I'm estimating about uh, a little bit higher than five miles per hour for wind. So we're gonna hold off no more than a half mil. That's uh, calming down. Smack. Yeah, that's very solid. This is a very precise weapon. It's hitting exactly where I'm aiming. Heck yeah. Turkey's at 400 yards. And again, I'm gonna dial for this one. All right, I'm still getting wind indicators from the right, so I'm gonna hold off about 0.3. Slam. All right, we still have right to left wind. So I'm gonna hold off about a half mil. I may not have my ballistics perfect, just like that one came in at its feet. So we're gonna come up a little bit. Or how about this? What if I actually dial? <laughs> it's supposed to be four mil radians. Whoops. One more time. Oh, that was over its head. Oh, the wind is all mixed up out there. I see some running left to right now. It's switching. Oh, we got a real fishtailing wind. I'm gonna wait for it to settle. Yeah, <laughs> hit him right on the top. So we can see that the wind was pushing just a little bit more from the left than from the right. He did not fall, wow. That should have been a solid hit. What do you say we knock him down? Ah, ah there he goes. All right, we've dealt with the animals. 600 yards, let's see what kind of group we can shoot out here. Now the wind is a mess, so I'm expecting there's gonna be a little bit of drifting around left to right. Um, I'm actually seeing different winds out on the range right now. Some of them 
like the ones closest to me are going right. No, those are, yeah, those are going right. Some of those out there are going left. And I can see some fluff on the breeze. It looks like it's mostly from the right. Wish me luck. There we go, five shots. Let's go up and see. I was trying to react to the wind and how it was changing. Uh, sometimes I get one straight in the face, which means that I actually need to aim just a little bit down because we get an updraft, uh, uh, updraft off these berms. I'll actually push the bullet up. Sometimes it was coming a bit from the right, so I tried to adjust for that. We'll see if uh, I just ended up going in a circle, but I'm pretty sure that they should all be in the black at least. Let's go find out. Considering what the wind was doing to me, I'm really happy with this. I know that with time, once I get to understand the ballistics, and especially if I come out on a day when maybe the wind isn't quite so crazy, I'll be able to tighten this up quite a bit. But for now, yeah, I'm really happy with it. You can see that the vertical overall is about like that. So we have, you know, maybe about two and a half, three inches of uh, a vertical difference here. And then, so it looks like I did pretty good at trying to pick when to aim down, when to aim up. Um, and then the windage was just the, uh, the tricky bit. How much was I actually getting from the left to the right? Uh, some of these I might have been overcompensating, aiming into the wind that wasn't actually there. Uh, sometimes out here, this is a really tricky place where you just want to true up, zero out, and then just try to hit the center every single time. But uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty close to the middle. I just need to figure out the ballistics a little bit better. I am really stoked about this. This is going to be plenty. And remember, this is just a little carbine, 18 inch carbine. This is gonna be plenty for those hogs, coyotes. Uh, if something wanders into my sights, I'm gonna be able to nail it. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.